guys, it's Sunshine and welcome once more to my studio. So today we are going straight into episode two of our six authors, six questions series. Now today's question is, how do you find inspiration in your work? So we're asking our wonderful authors here how and where they find inspiration. Our wonderful authors that we have for the day are Adam Wallace, Adrian Beck, Meredith Costain, Marianne Pierce, Michelle Worthington, and Danica Patterson. So without any further ado, oh, let's go get started with Michelle, maybe. Wow, I find inspiration for my work every time I walk out my front door. And I think that there are stories hiding everywhere. We just need to be open to seeing them. And a lot of the time, I'm actually inspired by my family or people that I meet or places that I go. So for example, with uh, Johnny's beard, I wrote that story for my brother, Johnny, who has a big bushy ginger beard. Um, <laughs> Pugs don't wear pajamas. I wrote that for my aunt Rose, who has a pug called Ellie, who actually does wear pajamas. And uh, Noah chases the wind. I wrote that for a little boy called Noah. But then it could be something that I love, like Australian animals. I love Australian animals. And I think we're so lucky to live in a country that has the weirdest and the strangest and the most inspirational animals in the world. So I love writing about Australian animals. And what I tend to do is something will inspire me in real life. So it could be seeing a kangaroo at a beach or it could be an owl sitting on my front fence. And I get an idea for my story based on something in real life, but then I like to add imagination icing on the top. Oh. So that's making the story a little bit more interesting by adding something that might be a little bit make-believe or just kind of spicing it up a little bit, mm -hmm. making it a bit more interesting. Three top tiny tips for finding inspiration would be look for the stories that are hidden all around you. Mm -hmm. Make sure you use your imagination to add some extra sparkle and don't be scared to make a mistake. Even if you think that it's not gonna be perfect when you write it the first time, put it down on paper anyway. Okay, well, I find inspiration in my work uh, in many ways. Uh, I have children who are five and seven, so that really helps. That's daily kind of inspiration in the most organic kind of target marketed sense. Um, but also I find massive amounts of inspiration in nature from the natural world. So I am endlessly fascinated and quite curious about um, the world around us and uh Probably a really good example of that is my most recent picture book, Scribbly Gum Secrets, which is behind me up there. Um, I was walking in a local forest, um, sort of an urban little bushwalk near us, and my daughter, who was two at the time, stopped and gasped at this tree and said to me, Mummy, who's drawn on those trees? And she was looking at a scribbly gum tree. And I said, oh no, that's just a scribbly gum tree. Don't worry about that. No one's drawn on it. And she said, well, how? How did it get those scribbles on it? And I didn't know the answer at the time. So I went and I researched and I found out the story and I was fascinated that this tiny little scribbly gum moth is responsible for the markings on these huge gum trees that are iconic to the Australian bush. And uh, I told my daughter and she didn't believe me. And so I thought, oh wow, there is some sort of point of fascination there. So that little story spark began there and ended up in a book that sort of fuses fact and fiction. So. There's a family where the mother explains how the marks are made scientifically, but the little boy is absolutely convinced that someone is writing on those trees. So a lot of my ideas come from a real life scenario and then sort of take off from there. My top three tips for finding inspiration. Personally, would be take yourself out in nature, uh, get very quiet so you can hear the voices inside your head. I hope the people I'm speaking to have voices inside their head. I believe it's a good sign. <laughs> and three, uh, as I grow up or since I've become a mum, write the ideas down because uh, I find that if I don't, they'll kind of 
they're sticky, slippery things and they, they sort of slide around and I can't remember the essence of the idea and what made it really interesting to me. So I'm constantly stealing receipts or pieces of paper or napkins wherever I am and I should just carry a notebook to write the ideas down and catch them because they are so slippery sometimes. <laughs> Well, I don't. I just get people <laughs> to tell me what to write. No, I <laughs> but sometimes that happens. I've sometimes worked with publishers who say, can you write us this particular story? So sometimes the inspiration can be someone just saying, here's a story we want you to write, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Other times, I actually also think, I don't know, I write every single day. So I think inspiration can just come, I think inspiration comes from doing the work rather than waiting for inspiration to come so you can do the work. I think if you're writing and writing and always having something going, things pop up out of that as well. Mm -hmm. So that's something I really like doing, but also just kind of anywhere. I've got I've got books that have started when I've heard a song on the radio and thought that'd be an amazing song in the soundtrack of a movie, so I'll write the book to that scene. And I've had things that people have said, things I've done. I'm very, very clumsy. So I always tell stories in schools about one character who's very clumsy who came about because I'm so clumsy when I dance. And you've seen me dance, Sunshine. You know it's dangerous. You're a great dancer. I know, but I broke, a, I broke my finger one time while I was dancing. And look, I karate shot myself in the throat one time while I was dancing. I stepped on a baby, Sunshine, when I was dancing one time. I don't know why. No. <laughs> True story. It was okay. It was okay. Pick your baby up, lady, I said. What's going on? <laughs> I think definitely, definitely write. Just writing every day, things will, things will pop in. Just being aware, I think, is a really important thing of just noticing what's happening around you. And because there, there are ideas everywhere, and people think there's not ideas everywhere. But I've seen books that are like bestsellers that are based around oranges, and there's stories about tractors. Like there's stuff that you think is so nothing but they can be turned into amazing stories because it's all about mm -hmm. you know, how you how you do it. So I think just being aware of, of just thinking, oh, and then yeah, kind of just thinking, how could that be a story? Mm -hmm. And th or thinking like, what if? And so I think, well, we're chatting on this, on this interview, how could that be a story? And it may not be, but if you're always thinking that, things are gonna pop in. And, and how can I take these real life things or these things that are happening, and even if it's not verbatim, taking that, and twisting it and turning it so it becomes a story. So I think, yeah, just, just kind of being aware and then going, oh, how can I use that? How can that be used in a story? And pretty much everything can be used in some way in a story. And so the inspiration is everywhere. It's just a matter of kind of grabbing the bits and then finding what fits with you and then sort of transfers into a story. Third tip, third tip, talk to children. They will definitely always give you ideas. I've had ideas for pictures when I've been out at schools, but even just chatting to kids and mucking around and sort of almost improvising with them and, and just making up stories with them. There's always things you go, oh, that would be such a cool story. Even if it's just a little snippet, you go, oh, I'm going to steal that and not pay you any royalties, kid. How do I find inspiration for my stories? Honestly, I find inspiration in the strangest places. <laughs> um, just life. I would have to say life. Um, I can remember writing a children's book called The House That Went Nova, as in Supernova. Cool. And it was based on the fact that I lived on a canal and I used to look across the canal at this house that was a huge house, like probably six or eight bedroom house, that was always empty. And then once a year, all the lights would go on. There would be people there for a week um and then the lights would go off and there would be no one there and so i wrote a whole story around this mysterious house and and how somebody uh ended up getting into the house through an underground tunnel and so honestly just the strangest things and sometimes it's an intersection of ideas too so when i was writing my young adults uh trilogy which is called night creatures and i think i mentioned the first book to burn bright that was an intersection of two things I was really interested in. One was nocturnal creatures, like the habits of nocturnal creatures. So what, what do creatures do when they're awake all night? Um, and uh, also uh, my experiences at boarding school, because I went to boarding school from the age of 11 to the age of 16. So somehow or other, 
my inspiration for that book became a melding of those two factors. <laughs> so, you know, I could never say I look for one place for the source of inspiration, um, but I do think that sometimes uh, reading non-fiction often gives me ideas. What are my three top tips for finding inspiration? I would say that the number one thing is to keep your eyes open. <laughs> it's easy to walk around every day thinking your thoughts in your head and not really noticing the things around you. So my number one tip would be open your eyes and look at what's happening around you. Uh, my number two tip would be listen. Um, again, we can go through life talking a lot um, and not actually listen to what people are saying to us. So um, one of my favourite things is listening to people tell their life stories. So my number two tip would be to listen. Uh, my number three tip would be to read. So, uh, or watch, read or watch. Watch television, watch movies, watch documentaries, or read anything that's of interest to you. Um, you know, you can get some great uh, ideas from, you know, reading things about science or, um, you know, reading things about the law or all sorts of strange places like that. So they're my top tips for you. How do I find inspiration for my work? Well, actually, ideas are everywhere. They're just floating, <laughs> floating around. <laughs> the trick is actually to be able to work out which ones are the keepers. And for me, the keepers are the one that won't leave me alone. I might hear a little snatch of conversation or I might read a story in the newspaper about some um, burglars who were robbing the 7-Eleven and <laughs> they had their dog with them. <laughs> and the security guard said, stop <laughs> to the burglars and the dog stopped <laughs> the burglars ran away and the dog had a dog tag on with it with its phone number <laughs> i thought great and that actually ended up in a scene of a kid's chapter book that i was writing so look they're everywhere um you just have to as i say know which ones and you'll know the keepers because they'll keep you awake at night you'll wake up in the middle of the night go yes <laughs> <laughs> or, or you're in the shower, which is really hard. I have heard that you can get little um, notepads that stick on the shower wall to write things down. I unfortunately had a really good idea. I'd been um, invited to write a short story for an anthology and I thought, mm, it's going to be I can't think of it. And I was actually in the middle of an aqua aerobics class in swimming pool. <laughs> and the whole opening sentence just crept into my brain and I thought, yes! That's it. And I thought, but I'm in an aqua aerobics class. And so <laughs> I couldn't jump out of bed and write it down. So I'm going, Mary <laughs> And everybody's like turning and staring at this mad woman who's going. <laughs> and, and then I had to run home. Another time I was driving to the supermarket and I had to write a little song for one of my Ella books. She's always writing songs and poems and stuff and it's going through my head and I thought, what am I going to do? What am I? So I actually had to pull over and record it into a phone. So um, perhaps there, you know, there's some good tips. Inspiration is there. Mm -hmm. Recognise which one it is but then make sure you can record it. So keep a notebook by the side of your bed or, um, you know, have your phone with, <laughs> with you to record into. Um, the other thing is, uh, in terms of getting ideas uh, for stuff is, because a lot of stuff I write is content well, contemporary realism, I think it's called, um, about real kids doing real, in real situations, I actually listen in around the playground or um, what kids are talking about as they're coming into school, into my classroom, if I'm doing a workshop, things like that, or older kids, um, public transport <laughs> is a good way to listen into conversation, changing rooms in department stores. Mm -hmm. You can hear some really fantastic stuff like that. So just you know, be, be a noticer, I think. Just mm -hmm. be aware of what's going on, but it's the idea that stays in your head for ages and won't let you go, that's the one that will make a story for you. 
Oh, it's not hard to find inspiration. In fact, what I find hard is shutting myself off from inspiration because I find inspiration pretty much everywhere. I'll always have hundreds of ideas running through my mind and sometimes it's a matter of I just need to dump them off. So I'll grab my iPhone and I'll just be typing away saying, oh, there's this great idea I had about an exploding coffee or something like that, right? <laughs> and so I'll just keep, I'll, I need to get them out of my head so that they don't keep yeah. um, spinning around. And, and then eventually you find those ones that sort of stay with you. So once you get all the inspiration out of your head, uh, the ones that really have something about them, the lightning in the bottle sort of ideas, they sort of start to bubble up without you even sort of consciously thinking about it. And so they're the ones that I pursue. But inspiration kind of comes from just living your life, you know? So I've got two daughters and they inspire a lot of the crazy, wacky stuff that I put in my work, <laughs> especially the dad jokes. I love oh, I to include dad yeah. jokes because I've become a <laughs> professional dad joker. Um, so I definitely include a lot of uh, bad dad humor in, in anything I do. <laughs> But uh, yeah, look, they'll often say silly and funny things, but I think it could be the same for anyone. Like um, just be open to everything that's happening to you as you're walking along. And I think as a creative type person, you're always thinking, oh, that, that thing happened. You don't just sort of leave it at, oh, that thing happened, isn't that weird? You think mm. that thing happened, maybe I could use that somehow. And so if you're open to all the creativity in general, I think that inspiration can come from everywhere. But as I said, I do get a lot from my family uh, and I do get a lot from my past because, uh, you know, why wouldn't you sort of look inward for inspiration at times? Because, you know, uh, a lot of everyone has like those funny moments or those embarrassing moments or even those those um, scary moments maybe um, yeah. from particularly from when you're writing kids books from your childhood and if you can mine some of those it'll seem so authentic on the page and often you know they say something I think it's tragedy plus time equals comedy or something like that comedy <laughs> plus tragedy plus time so if you had a particularly tragic yeah. uh, primary school where you weren't all that cool yeah. Uh, then there's plenty of comedy to be mined from that sort of thing. <laughs> it's funny now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's funny now. It wasn't funny then. It was terrible then. It was the end of the world then, but it's funny now. Three tiny tips for finding inspiration. Okay. Well, I reckon uh, tip number one is be open to inspiration coming from anywhere. Okay. Don't mm -hmm. just think, oh, it has to be some amazing thought that I've had in the middle of the night that, that just won't let me go to sleep. No, inspiration yeah. could come from the fact that you're, you're falling over on the way down the hallway. You fall over your own <laughs> slippers and slam into the floor and break a tooth. Inspiration could come from anywhere. So you've got to be open to it coming from anywhere, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. Number two, uh, keep a list of all your inspired thoughts because when you go back to them, sometimes you might not even realize where they came from in the first place, but they might spark something else. Mm -hmm. So make sure you don't just let them disappear into the ether. You gotta get them down because uh, from time to time, you will be looking for uh, you know another idea for a series or, some, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And if you just go through your notes, you never know what might spark an idea and there's another my third tiny tip now I don't even have to use that all that much th these days but um, now and again I do uh, this is what I talk about with kids if they're doing homework or if they need to do some creative writing for their own and they just have a blank page in front of them and they're like how am I gonna fill the blank so page scary. well this is how you do it okay, okay. <laughs> you give yourself 30 seconds you get your little stopwatch out and give yourself 30 seconds no wrong answer and you do a brain dump right you write as many <laughs> ideas as you possibly can no wrong answers whatsoever they could be as wild and crazy as stupid as you could possibly dream of right just mm -hmm. dump them all down as quick as possible as fast as you can get them that. out and give yourself permission just to do a brain dump don't second oh, guess crazy. anything and then at the end of it have a look at those ideas now 70% of it's going to be rubbish. 30% <laughs> no. of it is either something gold that you wouldn't have thought of, yeah. or it'll spark something in you to think, hang on, yeah, I see that idea, but what if I did this with that idea? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly inspiration strikes. So they're my three tips for inspiration. Thank you so much to all of our authors. That was absolutely wonderful as always. I love today. Inspiration is one of those tricky things, I think, where it's either there or it's really not there. It can be really hard to grasp. And these authors have some amazing tips on finding that inspiration again. I particularly loved this concept that they have of being a noticer. 
So whether that be having experiences out in the world and gaining things that way or listening to people talking and finding out their stories or whether it's just noticing the world around you and being constantly open for those opportunities for the stories to come in, whether they're good or bad stories, they're still there and it's still inspiring you to write. I think that's a really, really great tip. The second thing I really want to talk about here is I love that these authors write everything down. Like the idea that they've got little hidden pens and paper all over their house is pretty cool. Like some in the car, there's some in the shower. I think it's great that they're writing their ideas down as soon as they strike. And it's a really great tip for us as well. And for me, even as an illustrator, to do that same thing because you know, once an idea is gone, it's gone. Whereas if it's on paper, then at least you can revisit it later. I love that. Anyway, next week's episode is creating characters, which I'm really excited about. I can't wait to show you the, guys this episode. It is so interesting. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As usual, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'm still twitching at 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on a Friday night, so come join me there. All of our authors have some incredible resources, so make sure you go check out their websites, which I have linked below. So that's it. I hope you have a brilliant day, everybody. From me Hi. and all of the authors Hi. from today, Hello. thank you so much for being here and hanging out with us. Please stay safe and keep on painting and writing. <laughs> Bye.